Hello and welcome back to live coverage of the Apex Gaming Last Chance Qualifier. I'm Todd Tandy Anderson, joined by Ross Merriam. Say hi, Ross. Hi, Ross. Uh, we have one round in the books of five. Uh, after five rounds, we're going to cut to the top four players, and they're all going to be qualified for the $20,000 Apex Invitational uh, tomorrow, starting at 11 a.m. Uh, we are moving into round number two. Ross, why don't you give us a rundown of the two players we're going to be watching this round as well as what decks are playing. So, first up, we have David Dragowski playing Teamer Rhinos, actually tied for the most popular archetype in the field. There were five people on Rhinos, along with five on Rakdos Scam, and is it Merktide? If you count the one Teamer Merktide deck in, in the five, that makes five for them as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, a very popular deck here on the Apex series. We've always seen a lot of Rhinos here. A lot uh, of Cascade in general. People yeah. like their Shardless agents around yep. here. So, uh, Dragowski going, uh, going that route, picked up a win in round one, playing against... The coolest deck in the field. And I say that with What's no that? hesitation. Okay. Jonathan Hakes playing Jeskai Fairies. Okay, so Ross told me about the name of this deck or whatever. I don't really know what's in the deck. Uh, I'm going to try to guess a little bit. I'm going to go with Spellstutter Sprite. Four copies. Mute of Uh, No copies. What? It's a three-color deck. It's, it's a three-color deck. Okay, okay. All right. Well, Meat of Alt plus Spell Star Sprite was always, like, the one-two punch, man. It was so good. Yeah. There's uh, three copies of Sleep Cursed Fairy. Okay. That's the new one-drop 3-3 three, three that yeah. uh, enters and, taps. Enters with yeah. three stun counters. Cool, cool. Uh, four Unsettled Mariner. That's the main white splash. Sure. The blue-white yeah, creature. Okay. Changeling. Four Snapcaster Mage, of course. And one Brazen Borrower. I mean, of course. Snapcaster Mage is not a, not a fairy. Yeah, but it's an honorary fairy. So is this more of a wizard's deck? So there's Spellstutter Sprite for fairy synergies. There's also four copies of Flame of Anor. So this is a wizard and deck. And two wizards. Just like. guy wizards. No, change it's it. fairies. It's, it's wizards. fairies. Do not change it's it. It's literally a Flame of Anor deck. Are you kidding it's me? It's a Spellstutter Sprite deck. That means it's fairies. All right. Well, let's head on down to the feature <laughs> match area and watch David Dragowski on Team of Rhinos face off against Jonathan Hakes on Just Guy Fairies. Uh, just for you. They're going to be that middle seat. On your left is going to be uh, Jonathan Hakes with the cool deck that Ross really likes. And on your right is going to be Dragowski on the Team of Rhinos deck. Yeah. Now, looking over the Fairies deck list, important to keep note of counter spells. There's four counter spell, two spell peers, two is it charm, along with those spell starter sprites. And spell starter is particularly good against Cascade decks because even if you kill all of their fairies with the trigger on the stack, zero is good enough to counter Crashing Footfalls. Yeah, I mean, when I played, uh, I actually played a lot of Spellstar Sprite back in, I want to say Extended 2008 era, something like that. And, uh, you know, I used Spellstar Sprite pretty regularly to counter one drop effects. And then you would have, you know, your Vendillion Clicks, your uh, Mutavolts to help counter the two drops. But that's where Spellstar Sprite basically ended, you know. And it was rare that you got over the two um, outside of when you were playing with Bitter Blossom, you know, the thing that could generate tons and tons of tokens. But, yeah. But uh, good. With the way modern is, you don't really need to get that high for it still for it to be a powerful card. Now, I did see Ross pulling up a card on his laptop, uh, Riptide Laboratory, which is a recent reprint into Pioneer from the Modern Horizon set, yeah. right? Yeah. That uh, one was always great with uh, with those wizards. Unfortunately, no copies in the deck list. I'm disappointed. Yeah, well... Uh, it's a three-colored deck, Ross. <laughs> I would play it over a spell. Just cut a spell. <laughs> Only 19 lands on the deck. There's actually a low number. There's not any cheap cantrips. There's expressive iteration. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty low land count deck for Jonathan Hakes. All right, well, players are just playing some lands here in the first few turns. Hakes' deck is uh, very flash-oriented and... Uh, Dragowski here going to go ahead and fetch a Ketra Triumph on the end step. It's going to give him access to all three of his colors for Teamer. Yeah, if the opponent isn't really committing to the battlefield, the Teamer Rhinos deck doesn't do a whole lot in the first couple turns. Their in, you know, early plays are all interaction. Yep. So, not going to see a whole lot. I do see a Violent Outburst in Dragowski's hand. That's an important one in a matchup like this because you can pick a fight on their turn, have them tap out for some counter spells, and then do something on your turn like a Shardless Agent right. and force through your Rhinos that way. All right, land number three from Hakes is an Odawara. Usually when you play your channel lands as a land, that means that you don't have any more left in hand. So if you're a Dragowski, you have to know that there's probably a wall of counter magic you're going to have to fight through over the next few turns. Dragowski fetches for a basic force on the inset, maybe playing around main deck Blood Moon, but maybe just going to protect his life total a bit and play uh, a two-cost card on the inset here, maybe like an Icer land. Yeah. If you're a Dragowski, you're thinking you're playing against Is It Merktide right now. Right. <laughs> and eventually... 
you're going to realize you are not. Brazen Bar is a pickup for Dragowski. That's another flash threat that can be a little problematic for Hakes' Jeskai Fairies. I hope, I hope Hakes wins the entire Invitational. Okay. I I will not be impartial. Well, yeah. now I just want to build a Riptide Lab Flame of an Ore deck. Yeah. That's what I want. I want to build Blue Red, Riptide Lab, Muta Vault, Flame of an Ore, Snapcaster Mage, Spell Star Sprite. I don't care how else I win. That's all I want to do. Here is Valnot Burster in the inset. We were expecting this, and so was Hakes. Here is Crashing Footfalls number yeah. one. Hakes going to play a Spell Star Sprite. Sprite and counter it. I'm going to take a look at the cards from the Cascade. Here's Ooh. Force of Negation. Oh, no, that's not that a Spell Star Sprite. What is it? Is it Counterspell? Oh, man. I thought I saw a Spell Stutter in Hakes's hand earlier, which would be a disaster if he used a non-creature spell to try to counter this when he could have used a creature. Okay, I'm going to assume that's just actual Counterspell, and uh, it should be Exiled, but there's nothing else going to the Graveyard, so at some point, if we see that... Yeah, there are Snapcaster Mages in Hakes' deck, so exiling key spells is important. Oh. Mr. Director, do you mind going over there and saying something to them? Yep. Thank you, thank you. All right, Crashing Footfalls, though, did resolve, and now that's the story of this game. These two 4-4s four are going to bash in, putting Hakes down to 10 already. Yeah, and there's not a ton in the main deck to deal with a bunch of Rhinos for this Fairies deck. They try to stop these on the stacks, so the fact that Hakes failed to do so is a huge problem. You know, Flame of Anor can take them out one by one if they resolve. Other than that, it's Lightning Bolt, Wizards of Lightning, Lightning Helix for removal in the Fairies deck. That's a lot of three damage spells to deal with four toughness creatures. All right, Charlotte's Agent and Jonathan Hakes packs it in quickly. It's 1-0 for Team of Rhinos. The 4-4 four is a little too tough to beat for the red removal. You have to imagine Hakes' hand likely full of counter spells and lightning bolts there, unable to deal with four 4-4s four on turn number four. Yeah, and uh, we'll see if he can, uh, you know, find some more varied answers to these rhinos. Because in the main deck, it's all answering it on the stack. You would like to have some way of dealing with them mm -hmm. if they should enter the battlefield, because you know the rhino stack is going to bring in ways to fight counter wars. All right, well, as these players are reaching to their sideboards to improve their game to match, uh, I'm going to let Ross take a look over their sideboards as well and give his expert analysis. Uh, let's start with the Jeskai Fairies player. Okay, in the sideboard, I see two Obsidian Charmaw, three Subtlety, two Brotherhood's End, three Force of Negation, one Cast into the Fire, one Flusterstorm, one Ratchet Bomb, and two Stone of Eric. I like the additional counter spells in Force of Negation and yes. Flusterstorm, and I love the Ratchet Bomb. That's that card that can answer Rhinos on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. Only one, but it's an important one to be able to have access to in tight spots. So five easy cards to bring in there for uh, our Jonathan Higgs. Just Sky Fairies player. All right, on the other side of things, David Dragowski did win game number one with Team of Rhinos. What's in his sideboard do you think can improve this matchup against Jeskai Fairies? So in his sideboard, I see two Fury, three Endurance, one Brotherhood's End, one Commandeer, two Force of Vigor, two Mystical Dispute, one Flame of Anor, two Blood Moon, and one Beseju who endures. The two Mystical Disputes are supplementing two in the main, so we can side up to four. That's excellent in yes. the matchup. I could also see bringing in Endurance. It plays really good defense and can sometimes be good against Snapcaster Mage. It's also Flash. Flash against the deck that's all instant speed stuff is also pretty yeah. great. I don't like the, the, you know, I don't know how, all he saw was a counter spell. Yeah. So the, the tough part for Dragowski is he probably doesn't know what he's playing against. Probably yet. thinks it's Murktide still. Yeah. But Endurance is fine against Murktide. They have right. all those graveyard synergies. So uh, I don't think he's going to, you know, th it's going to, his lack of information is going to lead him to misstep in sideboarding because the, those two decks are rather similar. All right. Well, as these players continue their sideboarding and mulliganing for game number two, I'd like to take this time to say thank you to our sponsors. Ultimate Guard is the industry leader for uh, TCG supplies from the Katana sleeves that are highly sought after all the way to the giant archive deck box for holding your cubes and your... Uh, Commander decks, make sure to check out Ultimate Guard products at your local game store. And if uh, they don't have them, say, hey, why not? <laughs> Moxfield.com okay. is a awesome deck-building website that uh, I've been using on my personal stream for the last few days. 
uh, and I quite enjoy it. It's a nice deck builder. Uh, you can use it to share your decks with your friends and keep all your decks that you're building in one nice little place. Uh, we'll be partnering with Moxfield here on the Apex series, hopefully in the future as well, and using their links on most of our deck lists. Uh, you can also check out Wings, etc. Uh, their Grill and Pub is the place that we attend most when we're here in Caldwell, Ohio. We are very happy to uh, be partnered with them uh, for the Apex Invitational Series. They keep us fed and happy on these long tournament weekends. And lastly, a big thank you to our marquee sponsor, TCGplayer.com. They're the one-stop shop for all things TCG-related, from Disney's Lorcana, Magic the Gathering, and even Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! You can check out TCGplayer.com for any of your singles needs, and also check out their sister website, TCG Player Infinite, where you can check out their written articles uh, to get better at the games that you're trying to do. Players here are just about ready for game number two. It looks like Dragowski went back into the sideboard for a second, maybe thinking uh, differently. Maybe he has some knowledge of what Hakes is playing, and then you know had to give it a long think because it is such a outside the box and deck for the current modern metagame. All right, as these players are shuffling up for game number two, I'd also like to say thank you to Apex Gaming. Uh, they bring Ross Miriam and myself out to these events to provide commentary. It's always a really good time. Uh, they're located in Caldwell, Ohio, and uh, you can check out apexgaming.gg for more information about their events. Uh, this is the last weekend for Season 3, and uh, we'll be beginning Season 4 in, uh, I believe, March of next year, but I'm, I don't know how solid that is. Yeah. But it's early next year. Yeah, but apexgaming.gg. And if you're watching this right now, and you want to be in tomorrow's Invitational, you still have time. We've got one more LCQ to fire. That'll be at 5 p.m. today. If you can get to Caldwell, Ohio, before 5 o'clock. Yeah, just make sure to bring Mono Green Devotion. <laughs> yeah. yeah that one will be Pioneer. And you, too, can win an invite to the $20,000 Invitational starting tomorrow at yeah. 11 a.m. And that will be Modern. So bring a Pioneer deck and a Modern, and a modern deck. deck. You need yeah. two. I know that's a tall order, but we're, we're serious business here. We're playing Magic the Gathering. Yes. We're not playing Yu-Gi-Oh. We're That's not, not Pokemon. Fair. That's not fair. You and Pokemon are actually pretty serious business as well. All right. Dragowski here taking a peek at the opener, figuring out if he wants some more. I feel like Hakes has kept his. I see Odawara Forest, but no third land. But I do see a Lorien revealed. Maybe it's just uh, a lack of actual Cascaders. Okay. Well, here's the fairy that you were talking about, that one drop 3-3, three, three, the inner's tapped. And now Dragowski's like, That's not Rogovan. Yeah. <laughs> The jig is up. All right, what's this fairy's name again, Ross? Sleep Cursed Fairy. Sleep Cursed Fairy. Let's get that one on the screen, Mr. Director, because Sleep Cursed Fairy is not one that many players know. This is a standard card that uh, is a one-cost 3-3 fairy with Ward 2. It enters the battlefield tapped with three stun counters on it, and then if it would ever untap, you remove a stun counter, and you may pay two to untap it. But it doesn't untap. It removes a stun counter. It's actually kind of... Throws you off a little bit. Yeah. So now Hakes can leave his mana up, decide to interact with whatever Dragowski does, and if he doesn't interact or Dragowski doesn't do anything, sink that mani mana into the Sleep Cursed Fairy, start getting closer to untapping with it. Yeah. And while you may say that's a lot of investment for, you know, a 3-3 three, three flyer, well, it's a one-cost 3-3 three, three flyer that if you don't pay any mana eventually it'll just come online. It's just, it kind of has suspend, yeah. but you have the ability to pay two to speed it up a little bit. It's like the blue Sarah Avenger. Right. That's a really good way to put it. I like that. But then late in the game, it still has that untap ability, so sometimes you get to play a little offense and defense with it as you get more mana. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, Sarah Avenger is uh, an old favorite. Uh, was played a good bit in Legacy Death and Taxes because you could play it in Ether Vial. Uh, way ahead of schedule, and later on you could play for two while using Rishin Port and Wasteland. Alright, we're gonna go back Dragowski's way. Turn number two. What you got? I see a dead gone. That doesn't deal with the Sleep Cursed Fairy very well. Yeah, it's a lot of two damage spells in the Team of Rhinos deck, so Sleep Cursed Fairy is well sized for the matchup. There's, a, there's also a Fire Ice in, in the hand, so. And with War 2, it's really difficult to double up burn spells to answer the Sleep Cursed Fairy. All right. Suspend Crashing Footfalls is a play for Dragowski. This is going to make a couple 4-4s in a few turns, but 
It will have to be cast, and that allows Hakes to kind of plan around it, maybe get a spell star sprite ready for it. Yeah, and nothing for Hakes to interact with, so he gets to sink mana into the fairy. You remove a stun counter on the end step, remove one when you go to untap, and now next turn that fairy will actually untap and start rumbling. Yeah, if you were trying to be aggressive here, you could spend two and untap it now and attack. But Hakes has much better ways to use his mana. We're going to start off with Expressive Iteration. This is a way for him to dig for some answers or per perhaps just some lands. Maybe he was just missing that third land drop. Finds it with Missy Rainforest, and we're going to go back to Dragowski's way. Here's Cycle of Lore and Revealed. Yeah, got to figure that Hakes has some sort of one-mana interaction. Otherwise would have been more difficult to go for the iteration on this turn when Dragowski is going to get to that magical number of three mana on his next turn for a Cascade spell. Um, so I would suspect there is something like a, you know, a spell pierce or that one fluster storm from the sideboard. All right, Dragowski here going to go fetching with Lord Revealed. Finds Basic Island still a little scared of Blood Moon or perhaps has Blood Moon himself, unsure. We're going to tick... Rhinos down to three. Here's turn three. What you got? I haven't seen a Cascade spell in the hand yet. I think it's just a lot of red interaction. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's why he was tanking so hard on the mulligan. And one of his draws in the first three draws has been a Crashing Footfalls. And if I'm not mistaken, a second one has also been drawn. That is not the way you want a Rhino. It is not, but... As they say in the business, you gots to do what you gots to do. Indeed. What am I, some guy who's not lazy? <laughs> Ross is a big fan of uh, The Simpsons, but I'm a big fan of Futurama, and they actually share uh, many writers. Yes. So and it, a creator. A bunch of the references I make, Ross does not get because he hasn't seen that many episodes of Futurama. But I, on the other hand, have seen plenty of episodes of Simpsons, so I get a bunch of his references. All right, well, no play here for Dragowski on three, just land pass. And in response, we're going to go gone. Let's get dead gone on screen because this is one we actually see a decent amount in Team of Rhinos, but I don't actually see this card get cast very often. For one red mana, you can play dead, which is deal two to target creature. All right. Okay, buddy. How much? There it is. I was going to say, how do I read that thing? On the left, dead. Deal two to target creature. On the right, gone. The three mana to bounce a creature. It's a little weird because it's a red bounce effect. Yeah, and has been used in that capacity. Ooh. This seems aggressive. I think both players have forgot about Ward 2. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, wow. Huge blunder for David, but paid off, and John Hake's going to pitch that Force of Negation. Jeez Louise. Look, Ward is a relatively new ability, and Sleep Curse Fairy is a relatively new card. I'm just going to give both players a pass, and we're going to keep on keeping on. In it. The actual good news for Hakes is that this fetch didn't get punished by a violent outburst. Well, he had the oh, force, had the force negation, guess, yeah. so that was why he was okay playing that expressive iteration on two on turn three, leaving himself vulnerable to the uh, the end of turn violent outburst. Sleep cursed fairy is awake. Okie dokie. Yeah, it having war two is something to definitely keep in mind and it's a, a bit stronger than I thought it was even just a moment ago. Yeah, that is a big deal for a deck that is so tempo-oriented. You'd like to be able to keep your opponent off mana and Hakes, you know, failing to take advantage of it could really cost him later in this game. All right, back Dragowski's way after that three-point swing, and now we're going to have a board f empty, but a handful of cards can play Endurance. Maybe has Von Albers or something in hand that he's been sandbagging. We'll see what the play is for the turn. Hmm. Not getting a great look at Dragowski's hand. I think I see another dead gone over there. Yeah. Is that a Flame of Venora? Can't tell. Maybe it's Odawara. What do you want to do, David? And it's tough for him at this point because now Hakes is fully untapped. There's a ton of potential interaction. You know, given that he exiled an expressive iteration to the Force of Negation, you have to assume the remaining cards are pretty good, unless he's very flooded. Yeah, I I don't see Dragowski breaking through 
whatever Hakes has here. Um, that force negation was an extreme sign of strength. It's a, I am flush with resources, way to answer crashing footfall specifically, and I need to make sure that my creatures are all alive and well. Is Drakowski going to go for another gone? Let's, let's see if Hakes can remember the ward trigger at this time. If not, he might just return to hand. It is a trigger that you can miss. Yeah. After the match, I'll probably go talk to Hakes and remind him about Ward. These new cards, you know, they have so much text on them, it's easy to, to miss little things like that. But it's always rough to see something like that on camera. Yeah, it could end up being a big deal. You know, there's still four cards back. I think I see two copies of Spellstarter Sprite for Hakes. Mm -hmm. Those are excellent at stopping crashing footfalls. Yeah, specifically because they don't get hit with Force of Negation. Can get hit with Mystical Dispute, but I don't think Dragowski has found any of his four copies of that powerful counterspell. Ooh, I think they both just noticed Ward. <laughs> well, if I was Hakes, I wouldn't have said anything, because you might have been able to get him on the next one. Yeah, true. And now he's probably just beat himself up, but he gave away a little bit of equity. Ooh. I don't see Cra uh, Cascader, but I do see Endurance. Oh, there's a Cascader. Okay. But this right. will just meet a spell starter sprite. Yeah. The the two two body doesn't do a whole lot because almost all of Hakes's creatures fly. Could trade for a Snapcaster Mage later on. All right, here's Footfalls. This is a deterministic find. Sometimes you see the sideboard have cool two drops in them or whatever to punish specific hard matchups, but. For the most part, you know, these yes. Cascade decks are all just designed. Spellstar Sprite! Let's get that one on the screen. For those of you at home who have been playing Magic uh, longer than most players have been alive, uh, Spellstar Sprite, two cost, one one flyer from Lorwyn. When it enters the battlefield, you may counter target spell with mana value equal to or less than the number of fairies you control. Uh, this was integral to fairy success when it was in Standard. And uh, along with Bitter Blossom, it allowed you to counter bigger and more expensive spells. But it was quite strong in uh, Old Extended back in the 2000s by just countering those powerful zeros and ones. That's what we see it doing here. It's doing a great job. You're doing great, sweetie. <laughs> All right. So uh, Crashing Footfalls down, Shortless Agent, not a big deal. We're going to start swinging in for four points of damage in the air. And we'll see if uh, Hakes can end this game and force a game three or if Dragowski's able to find some answers. Yeah, and there is plenty of burn in this fairy stack for Hakes. Four copies of Lightning Bolt, two copies of Wizard's Lightning, and a Lightning Helix as a singleton. So, uh, you know, if we can get David down to three or six, some burn spells could easily finish him off. All right, looks like we're going to fetch here in response to the attack. Uh, likely going to go get a red source and play dead on the spell stutter sprite. That's my guess. Yeah, seems to be what David is thinking about. But there's no mountain to get, so you're going to end up having to shock yourself to do it. So unless you really need the mana on your next turn, you're kind of losing out in terms of the trade-off of life total. Okay, well, I guess he's under the assumption that the spell Spellstar Sprite is just going to deal more damage in the long run anyway, so might as well try to kill it now. I do this quite a bit with Lightning Bolt on Goblin Guide. Like, eh, I'm just going to take it anyway, so might as well just fetch shock and kill it. Yeah, when they're attacking for two, it's a little bit different. Ooh, Hakes gets aggressive, goes for the Protect. Yeah, and for those of you who are like, oh, Dead Gone, that costs four. Not when it's on the stack. The Dead... Only cost one, so it gets countered by the spell search, right? That's interesting, because there is an endurance in Dragowski's hand. If Hakes doesn't have a way to stop the endurance, that could stabilize this battlefield against the army of flyers. All right, now Hakes you... says, These, this crashing footfall resolves. I'm going to battle you in the air. Maybe even has another counterspell for the endurance. We'll have to wait and see for next turn. Yeah, makes me wonder if Hakes has something like Bolt Snap Bolt, and he, he did the math, was like, yeah, I'll just get him to six, mm -hmm. and I can finish him off. Being able to play both Lightning Bolt and Wizard's Lightning in your deck with Snapcaster Mage makes me... Whew! Fan me now! Modern yep. needs more Bolt Snap Bolt. Yeah, I agree with that. God, I just want to go home and brew, brew now. 
think when I get home on Monday, that's the first thing I'm doing is Spell Star Sprite, Snapcaster Mage, Flame of Anor, Mutaval, Riptide Lab, Wizards Lightning, Lightning Bolt. Okay, Shardless Agent coming in because it can't do any blocking. Yeah, and the Rhinos have summoning sickness that Footfalls did resolve just now. It's funny, the suspend mechanic actually gives haste to creatures that you suspend. Uh, you know, there is, I think it's Dirkwood Boar. Was, was that what it's yeah, called? Yeah, that was the one of the common ones. Big suspend one that was a common. The best one was Errant Ephemeron. Errant Ephemeron. Yeah, that one was nice. Yeah, there's one burn spell. Right near. All right, Dragowski, you got anything? We know he has Endurance, but he also has Fire Ice. Maybe he's thinking about using Fire on the two Spell Star Sprites while the shields are down. Okay, here comes the swing. Dragowski, here comes Ambush. Yeah, got to play the Endurance. See if Hakes has the kill here in response. If we have the Burn or the Snapcaster Mage, we can do exactly that. Yep, bolt you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Is that good enough? Higgs did indeed have the double bolt to finish off Dragowski, so that aggressive spell starter sprite line makes a lot of sense. Right. Oh, we're going to try to find a force negation? I guess, but we'll, uh, yeah, okay, sure. And no. Oh, hard cast the force negation on the ice to prevent the draw. So we can't find force negation. So that should do it. Game number two goes to Jonathan Hakes and that Jeskai Fairies build. And we're going to be moving to game number three. Yeah, that's really how you draw it up for these kind of tempo-style fairy decks. You know, play the turn one Sleep Cursed Fey. Opponent didn't really have good interaction for it. You got to set up your mana base, set up your counter wall, stop what's relevant, and then when the time comes, get really aggressive and close out the game with a couple big attacks and a couple burn spells. All righty. Well, Ross, we got a little bit of time here to kill while these players are going between games two and three. Uh, favorite episode of The Simpsons, go. Bart versus Australia. Bart versus Australia. Is that the one where he has to, like, make amends because he uh, yeah. makes that prank call? He, yeah, he committed a fraud, and they try to kick him with a giant boot. Favorite line from the episode? Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Simpson shush, disparaging the boot is a bootable offense. It's one of their <laughs> proudest traditions. <laughs> Doesn't the boot have, like, spikes on it or something, too? Isn't no, it, like, it's a grody? A, it's just a giant boot. Like, All right. Who gets to? I remember it was like uh, the president gets to kick him or whatever or something, the right? The prime minister. The prime minister. Andy. <laughs> he lives down the road. He is first seen um, lying in a tire in the middle of the river, naked, drinking a Foster's. Mm. Okay, your turn. Ask me something. Mm. We're killing time here, Ross. That's what we're doing. What if we talked about Magic the Gathering? Uh, okay. The game that we're Go covering. ahead. What would you like to talk about re the <laughs> Gathering, Ross? There you go. Why am I in charge of carrying everything around here? Because that's your role on fine, the commentary fine, team. Fine, 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 fine. Okay. Uh, so, this matchup, Team of Rhinos, Jeskai Fairies. Uh, um, I don't really know who's favored or unfavored. I haven't really seen this Jeskai Fairies deck at all. I am very excited about the list. Do you want to just talk about cards in the deck? So, if we want to just run down the list, uh, we went through the creature package earlier. Spells. We got four Expressive Iteration, four Lightning Bolt, four Counter Spell, four Flame of Anor, <laughs> two Spell Pierce, two Wizards of Lightning, two Is It Charm, two Essence Flux, which is a cool one with Spell Starter Sprite and mm -hmm. Snapcaster Mage. There's also just a cool one with like Sleep Cursed Fate and Unsettled Mariner. You force your opponent to spend a, a lot of mana to try to use a removal spell, then you just save it for one. Uh, and then the one of Lightning Helix, of course. I'm a little concerned about 19 lands. I'm also a little concerned about being on the draw. But the fact that Spell Starter Sprite counters a turn three uh, cascade into crashing footfalls even when you're on the draw is great. So Spell Starter Sprite to me is the key card for this matchup. We saw him cast two of them there in game two after casting zero in game one. Mm. And so it's kind of been the difference in both games. Um, the real question for Dragowski is trying to be patient and find a turn to force through this wall of counter spells. You've got force of negations. You can use violent outburst to turn those on as a defensive counter spell. You've got four copies of Myst mystical dispute in your post sideboard configuration. You need to find some number of those. Try to find a window, you know, where maybe your opponent taps out on the end step to, uh, you know, remove a stun counter from sleep cursed fairy mm -hmm. or deploy another creature onto the battlefield to start attacking. Catch your opponent with their mana tapped somewhat low, and then win a key counter war. Because as I said during game one, 
once those rhinos enter the battlefield, it's really difficult for Jonathan Hakes to take them off. Yeah, normally we see things like engine explosives uh, in heavy numbers, Chalice the Void out of these blue-red decks as ways to help keep uh, rhinos from uh, resolving or just like punishing them once they've already resolved. The uh, sideboard here for Jonathan Hakes uh, only has one copy of Ratchet Bomb as yeah. that. But you just have cool. so much cheap counter magic to Man. try to stop them that you have a pretty good chance of, you know, keeping it down uh, or keeping it, you know, off the battlefield entirely. So uh, that's really the plan here. But that requires very careful planning, careful sequencing, and sometimes aggressive mulliganing. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can keep a hand without multiple counter spells in this matchup because they're going to put you to the test early and often. All right, as these players are shuffling up here for game number three, we're going to have David Dragowski on Team of Rhinos on the play. And uh, he's going to be looking for, you know, uh, maybe ice on turn two to put the shields down and then going to go for, you know, the turn three Von Outburst or Shardless Agent. Yeah, ice your land. That's actually a really good thing to bring up and a very strong tactic in this matchup because... You know, the, the Fairies deck is going to want to use all of its mana every turn. Going to want to deploy some early threats to start getting the pressure down, and that can leave them vulnerable if you can just take one mana away on a key turn. So Dragowski, I don't know if you saw his hand, actually boarded in a Brotherhood's Int. It's a card I don't see too often out of the sideboard of Team of Rhinos, but uh, it looks like it could be great here at dealing with the uh, ward ability on that sleeping uh, sleep yeah. curse. Sleep Cursed Fairy. Fairy. That was pretty close. And, and Brotherhood's End is going to kill all the creatures out of the Fairy deck. Sorcery is a little awkward against a deck with all Flash creatures, but if you can ever get two creatures with it, it's solid. It's a singleton on the sideboard. I don't mind it coming in. Get your mana set up with this Ketria Triome. It's one of the nice things, The as far as a dynamic in this matchup, that is beneficial for Hakes. You know, the Rhinos deck doesn't have proactive plays on the first two turns of the game unless they get, uh, you know, are on the draw with Gemstone Caverns. So you do have a couple turns to be able to try to land some threats and then start holding up your counter wall. It's, it's pretty clear what is the first turn where you need to be fully untapped with all of your defenses ready. All right. Just a land for Hakes. We're going to go back to Gowski's way for turn number two. Ice is not really available till the end step. That scalding turn can be cracked in response, but Hake's going to leave himself vulnerable to ice now. We're going to go fetching for a Rogren Triumph. This is going to unlock all three colors. Yeah, I might need to play an Unsettled Mariner here on turn two, but that would be very risky if you don't have a Force of Negation. Or the one Ratchet Bomb. Hmm. All right, back to Jonathan Hakes. Draws for turn. Looks like a subtlety. No, it's not. I'm sorry. I think it's just a Hall of the Storm Giants. And there it is. The big creature land could be a factor later on, but it's going to take some time. Dragowski here going to fetch on turn number two. Let's we'll see what he goes and gets. If it's an untapped land, we might see an ice here on the end step on that Rogron Trium to make sure Counterspell and Spellstar Sprite are no longer at the ready. Yeah, I would definitely wouldn't mind that. We're looking... Probably basic. He's been a basic fetcher. I lied. Steam vents. And entering tap, so no ice on the end step. Yeah, may just start blasting, playing the Violent Outburst and the Shardless Agents over the next few turns, just hoping that one of them resolves. Yeah. Could be taking more of an attrition approach to this matchup. Fire is a pretty effective removal spell. There's a lot of one toughness creatures in the fairy deck. Yeah, no sleep curse fey means that most of those two damage uh, effects are going to be turned on. The majority of fairies are quite small. Ooh, that is a crashing footfalls. Continues to not be very good. Yeah, if he draws it and doesn't suspend it here, you have to imagine Violent Outburst is coming on the instep. Maybe it's just something like uh, Endurance, you know, but we'll see what the play is. Will Hall starting his uh, second climb back from 0-1. Took down his round two match against James Stevens on burn. See if he can get a little bit better breaker luck this time. If yeah. he completes the 4-0 comeback. Losing round one is hard in these because major tiebreakers are pretty weak at the end of the day. But, 
you know, thing, good things can happen even if you lose round one. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, really need your round one opponent to have a, a strong tournament. All right, we're going to go ahead and suspend Crashing Footfalls. This is a sign that David is playing for the long game or just doesn't have any of the Cascaders in hand. We'll see which it is pretty shortly. We'll see if Hakes can get any pressure down. Finds lane number three in Spire Bluff Canal, untapped. Yeah, I had the Sleep Cursed Fairy on turn one in game two, and that was very critical in terms of clocking Dragowski and ending the game right. in a reasonable time frame. So eventually, you will run out of counter spells. You played modern, right? All these decks just draw a million cards. Yeah, this one doesn't. That's true. We got Expressive Iteration and Flame of Nor. That's a lot, but you're right. You're right. No, nothing crazy like the One Ring. Beanstalk. Yeah. Just good, fair, honest two-for-ones. Is there anything more snoozable than in a turn fetch? It's like, ugh, I sleep. <laughs> Well, okay, got to get your mana base set up, Todd. I know. I know. Got to cast all these really powerful spells. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're done shuffling. It. Imagine how many minutes of people's life have been drained away from fetch lands. Just that fetch land alone, like 2,000 minutes of people's time gone. I'm sure if whoever came up with the fetch lands could take it back, they would. Well, you're going to have to reach back a long time because there were bad fetch lands uh, well before there were the good onslaught yeah. fetch lands. Bad river and rocky tar pit. Yeah, they literally put bad on bad river because they knew <laughs> they were going to make polluted delta later. Land number four for Jonathan Hakes. No play from either player, really. Just posturing, hitting land drops. Generally, I would say that favors Dragowski because they're the more powerful deck going long. But if the game does go long enough, that Hall of Storm Giants could really swing things. Okay, this is a pretty late to the party ice, but perhaps Dragowski doesn't have another play. We're going to tap Rogan Triumph and draw a card. Hakes likely says flow to mana. We'll see if uh, any fireworks happen. That's afterwards. a mystical dispute. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. And there's a violent outburst in hand. If we can get to land four. We could potentially have Outburst with Dispute backup and maybe even Subtlety backup for a Spell Stutter. I think okay. there was another Subtlety. Yeah, I think so too. So uh, my guess is unlikely to resolve the first Crashing Footfalls here, but maybe it just wants to sit and wait. Uh, there's no pressure from Hakes, right? And so like the longer you wait, the more likely it is you can overload your opponent on one turn. We're going to fetch an island as Hague, so maybe we're going to see something like Archmage's Charm or some draw effect here on the end step. Maybe just Flame of Nord draw two. Yeah. If you have the Force of Negation, that's fine. Otherwise, you are running into the Violent Outburst. Let's get Flame of Nord on screen. Let's talk about this card a little bit. No Flame. No Flame. But this is uh, probably a focal point for the deck. Uh, for three mana, you get to choose one. Target player draws two cards, destroy target artifact, or deal five to target creature. This is often found in the sideboard of many decks looking to destroy Chalice of the Void, but uh, it's rare that we actually see like a wizard sub-theme that actually allows you to choose two. And that is where the strength of Flame of Nort really comes through. Uh, when you play Snapcaster Mage or Spellstar Sprite or one of the other wizards, it uh, makes Flame of Nort into a super-juiced version of itself. The card is quite strong. Uh, it's been a very key card for uh, Rhino's decks, actually, right. because it is a main deckable answer to Chalice of the Void. And I think uh, it was Kai Bood who top aided the modern Pro Tour playing with Flame of Venor in Rhino's and had Mutavault in its deck to help turn it on. That was kind of a cool little thing. Yeah. Dragowski uh, actually has two copies in the deck and one Mutavault. Nice. All right. Find Sleep Curse Fey off of the Expressive Iteration. But do we have another land drop so we can hold up more interaction? My guess is yes. Got a lot of cards in hand. Just haven't really okay. cast any creatures. All right, okay. we're going to cast Sleep Curse Fae. we got two mana up. Here we go, Dragowski. Yeah, this is a pretty key turn. I do see Force of Negation in Hakes' hand, so potentially he has something like Counterspell or Spell Stutter plus Force of Negation, yeah. which is pretty good protection. But Unfortunately, with... Force is turned off on his own turn, though. 
Yes. And we know this Violent Outburst is likely getting fired off here, but maybe he wants to wait. He does want to wait. We're going to go for a Mystical oh. Dispute on the Sleep Curse okay. Fairy. It's not resolved yet. Deciding to fight over the creatures. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I like it. He's a little strangled on mana, and this is just buys him a lot of time. Yeah. And you've got that Crashing Footfalls that's going to come off Suspend eventually. That'll tax Hanks' mana. Maybe that's the turn you decide to go for it. Right. All right. Fairy down. I'm going to go back to Dragowski's way. We'll see if he's able to capitalize on the low mana availability of Hakes, but we know Hakes does have that Force of Negation to protect. Down to one. All right, draws for turn. It's another Crashing Footfalls. That's like, uh, it happens so much because it's just a card in your deck that you play four of, but drawing Crashing Footfalls is so demoralizing. I can't explain it. <laughs> it's not even that bad. Like, spending it on turn one, it's like, fine. I, on turn one, it's fine. Later in the game, it's pretty bad. Yeah. I wish there were more, like, Force of Vigor, Endurance-type cards to main deck in decks like Rhinos to be able to pitch it. You know. If, yeah, if that's, it, that's what we need, Todd. More God forbid, free spells. Look, God forbid they ever make a Crashing Footfalls that's blue, and it just makes, like, three one flyers or whatever. But uh, if that's the case... The game is over. I'll win every tournament from there on. <laughs> You've heard it here. I, I need everybody watching to hold Todd to that. Let's no, put that. No, no, Make sure it I exists. said the same thing about Spire Bluff Canal before it was printed. I said if they ever make a blue-red fast land, I'll never lose again. Turns out everyone gets to play with them. <laughs> Not just me. <laughs> the event's tapped. Crashing Footfall is about to come off Suspend. We'll see how Dragowski wants to play this turn cycle. Hicks has a ton of mana at the ready. We're going to go tick down Crashing Footfalls on my main phase. We'll yeah, this is got. the key turn. I almost would have liked to see that Steamets untap just to maximize your resources for this critical turn. Uh, you never know what your opponent might have with multiple disputes or fluster storms, things like that. I guess not fluster storm, but... Maybe they got some ricochet traps. All right. Well, the footfalls is still on the stack, I believe. I think he just shortcutted it to the graveyard because of the uh, time counter or whatever. So the subtlety here is going to come down, and that's going to target the spell source sprite. And then we're going to have a counter spell targeting the uh, – I don't know which one but probably the subtlety so that spell source sprite can resolve. Yeah. If you let the subtlety resolve, then counter spell the – Crashing Footfalls, you run afoul of Force of Negation. So, uh, yeah, it, it Counterspell is targeting the subtlety. I like that. Yeah. All right, let's see if Dragowski has more interaction. I see, a, I think, a Mystical Dispute in his hand. Dispute also has a a Violent Outburst. Could just go for a different Footfalls. Yeah, that plays around an opposing Mystical Dispute here, which is maybe what Hakes has. But I think Hakes' last card is actually, or Hakes' last point of interaction is actually a Spell Pierce. So Mystical Dispute could be pretty gross here and force Hakes to play Force of Negation as a pitch interactive piece to prevent this footfalls. We'll see what Dragowski decides to do. This is the turn the game has been building towards, so... Uh, and we're deep in Game 3. The players should have a pretty good idea of what is in the opposing deck, what cards they need to play around. Dragowski has not yet seen Mystical Dispute out of Hakes, and I don't think there are any copies in Hakes' list. All right, we'll see if Dragowski wants to fire off this Mystical Dispute. Yeah, it does fire off his own. This plays around Spell Pierce. Yeah, it goes to counter the Spell Stutter Sprite. You're not going get, to get to keep the subtlety anyway since that was evoked. Mm -hmm. Might as well deal with the Sprite. Yeah, now deal with it permanently. So now counter spell and subtlety is done deal. Don't care about that anymore. Mystical Dispute now targeting the Spell Stutter Sprite. So... This will hard counter it to the graveyard instead of letting him put it back on top. Yeah. So, yeah, let's let the counter spell resolve. Well, we can't do that with the mystical dispute. Whatever. Spell let them do it. They both agree to do it. It doesn't change anything. Here's dispute. Getting countered by force of negation, pitching counter spell. Let's see if Dragowski has anything else. We still technically have a draw step, so we can go draw. If we hit an untapped land, we can still violent outburst while the shields are down. Yeah. 
And pitching the counter spell, like if we had just had that untapped steam vents, we could have just counter spelled and still had force negation up. Jonathan Hake's getting punished. Wanted to keep that two life, but this was the key turn. This is the turn where you wanted to have all your mana. Agreed. Okay, so it looks like Dispute's going to get exiled, and Crashing Footfalls goes to the graveyard. Now, draw for turn is an untapped land. Is that an island? Not sure. Oh, it's a you. We're going to yeah. go Cascading. Dragowski immediately slams the outburst, even though it's an instant. Love that. Don't want your opponent to untap. Yeah, if you got another Force Negation, so be it. There's the Footfalls. We have a Spell Pierce, and that's going to take care of it. Okay. So, effectively, no real punish for Hakes on the tapped land because of the Spell Pierce. All right. You did lose a card. You would have lost that card anyway, though. Yeah, he didn't have the mana to play the... Uh... Anyway, doesn't matter. One mana doesn't change the sequence. Dragowski here, all done. Passed back, Jonathan Franks. Yeah, we already made a land drop, so yeah, nothing left to do. Now yeah. do we fire up the Hall of the Storm Giants if we have a land? Maybe we do if we're out of interaction. Uh, Dragowski still has three cards in hand, though. And you got to figure there's at least some goods left if we pitched a counterspell to the Force of Negation. Fair. All right, let's see if Hakes has anything else in reserve. Here's a Flame of Venor. We're going to main phase this to draw two cards. I don't love that. I would, you know, I think he just wants to hit the land drop for the Hall of the Storm Giants, and there's no yeah. artifact targets. And if a Crashing Footfall is resolved, that's like pretty bad for him, also. So, yeah, it's fine. Whatever. Divination. So now, what does Dragowski have left over? We know about the Crashing Footfalls that he drew last turn. Looks like that's about to get suspended. Okay. Four turns from now, you will be under some pressure. <laughs> Is that a pass? Uh, it was finger guns. Yeah. I think that's the universal sign, universal sign of year ago. Yeah, you're up. Okay, down to 17 is Hakes from the fetch. Still 17 to 16. We are deep in the game, but both players here are playing very tight to the hip, not having a whole lot of room to maneuver between these instants. You know, if you tap out in the wrong spot, you just get super punished sometimes, so you got to be very careful. And a turn Wizards Lightning you, zap. So that's going to get Drakowski down to 13. If we wanted to fire up the hall, that would get him to 5. I think they're just confirming life totals here from uh, making sure everything is equal or even. Yeah, it might have had a discrepancy there. I believe Dragowski is going to go down to 13 when all the dust settles. And we're going to go back Hakes' way. Has Hall of the Storm Giants here, which can crash on in with a spell search sprite. But we have a Valon Outburst here during the end step. Are the shields down? Does Jonathan Hanks have the answer? We're going to go Cascade and going to find Crashing Footfalls. This is going to be Footfalls number three of the game. Might need to dig pretty deep to find it. Yeah, we can use Endurance to shuffle them back in from the graveyard eventually if the game does end up going that long. I think if that happens, we're going to be well out of time. These players here are playing a little slowly. Not like intentionally or maliciously, but just it's a very difficult to navigate game. And they are getting a little low on the clock there, you see, up by their life totals. Just hit the four-minute mark remaining. A draw here is a disaster. Yeah, draws in these last-chance qualifiers are about as bad as a loss most of the time. So, Hake's going to take a look at what he has seen off the Cascade. Okie dokie. Now, do we have an ant? No. Yeah, it looks like the rhino's entered, so. Yep. That's Hakes bad. here. Maybe just with burn left, that Hall of the Storm Giants doesn't even look that good against two rhinos. Well, it can just play defense. Ooh, Snapcaster on Flame of Anor, eh? Yeah, kill a rhino, draw two. That's a good way to deal with half a rhino, and maybe you'll find another Flame of Anor to deal with the other and draw two more cards. This creates an immense amount of velocity that keeps Hakes in business and able to contain future threats. It's Expressive Iteration and a card I don't recognize. Ah, oh, yeah, our director is saying Flusterstorm. Okay. 
Gaskey down to 12. Only one crashing footfall token left in play, but can use that to leverage some pressure. Ooh, Murktide Regent. Murktide is pretty, pretty, big. pretty, pretty good. Pretty big. Pretty big boy. Really big shoe. That's a callback. <laughs> <laughs> Back for four. What percent of our audience do you think understood that reference? I'm going to guess somewhere around sub 10. One. Sub 1%. One sub 1%. Oh, no. We... Is that from the same episode? That's a really big shoe. It's just Ed Sullivan. Oh, okay. Yeah, 0% then. Just yeah. you, Ross. <laughs> All I'm right. I'm special. Here is Murktide Regent. For those of you who don't know, the reason why Ross loves The Simpsons and probably The Ed Sullivan Show is because he didn't have cable growing up and only had the local stations, and that's where you see The Ed Sullivan Show, and that's where you see The Simpsons, but great pieces of media, for sure. It looks like we only have four spells to exile. Oh, no. Delve. Just so a 7-7. Seven, seven, seven. Seven. It's an important point, because it means the hall can attack in. Mm, good call. With one burn spell, it actually forces... I guess it doesn't force a block on the hall, though. It just forces a block. Yeah, okay. We tried to put five counters on it. Yeah. All right. Your turn. So, you know... You know what do you... If you're Dragowski, what do you do if Hakes just fires up and attacks with everything? Do you block the Snapcaster and go to four? You don't have a lethal crack back. Obviously, you know, it depends on what Dragowski is in Dragowski's hand, but now irrelevant. Finds Unsettled Mariner, Spellstar Sprite, and Force Negation. Force Negation. You can go Force in Hand, Unsettled Mariner, to play. Seems like that's what he's going to do. Could keep Spellstar Sprite over Force, I guess. Yeah, once you cast the Mariner, the Sprite is for three. Alright, casting the Mariner. Now facing down an immense amount of pressure, though. 7-7 seven, seven, Merc Tide and the 4-4 four, four Rhino. It's only 11 damage, so not threatening lethal next turn. But without a block, anything like Fire, Ice, or Bone Crusher Giant's Stomp can potentially finish the game. Yeah. This game really is came down to Hakes not having any pressure early on. Even if he had just had a 2-1 a, a Snapcaster Mage attacking in those early turns or, or you know, a Unsettled Mariner. That would have made a huge difference in this game, but wasn't able to plink away at Dragowski's life total while the players weren't taking many game actions, and now just doesn't really have the oomph to get through with Dragowski still at a healthy 12. All right, so we are entering into turns, and uh, time has now been called. This is going to be turn number one is David Dragowski. Ticks down the crashing footfalls. Has the potential to win the game here. Uh, maybe even this turn if he's lucky, but we know Hakes has quite a bit of defense, not only in play, but also in hand. And uh, I believe that if Hakes tries hard enough, he'll be able to force the draw in this match. Um, I'm unsure if he'll be able to win, but with Lightning Bolts and Snapcasters in the deck, anything's possible. Yeah, may need to use turn two to get an attack in with the Hall. Yeah. And the hall is the, the big turning point. It, that could be something Dragowski gets super punished for if he uh, gets aggressive. Yeah. So it really comes down to, does Dragowski want to be aggressive and try to win the game himself and risk losing to the hall? Or do you play for the draw? As we said earlier, the draw is not good in this format. There are certain tournament formats where a draw, a first draw especially, can be okay. Here it would basically be a loss. Brotherhood's End. Deal three damage to all creatures. We have Spell Star Sprite to counter it. Does Dragowski have subtlety to fight back? No, it gets countered. That could have been backbreaking. Yeah, I think Hakes kept Spell Stutter off that iteration last turn instead of the Force of Negation. I guess both stop the end, but Spell Stutter does it while adding another body to the battlefield. They can either chump block this Murktide Regent or. Plink across for more damage. A full-on attack from Jagowski does leave him vulnerable to a lethal crack back. So I don't think that an 11-point attack is going to do it here. So I'll guess David's just going to go ahead and 
pass yeah. the turn would be my guess. Maybe attacks with one of the two creatures. Yeah, David has two more turns after this. He's going to take turn three and turn five. So if he can find a way to get in with the Murktide region each of those two turns, he'll win. He could play defensively this turn and still set that up. But trying to get through these spell starter sprites is going to be tough, especially because of Unsettled Mariner. You know, if you try to fire the two one ones, you have to pay two extra for the right. Mariner because you've targeted two creatures. So that's a four mana fire that you somehow have to resolve through whatever counter spells Hakes has left over. Right. I think that's a, a great point, and it's uh, one of the reasons why that Brotherhood's in was so pivotal on the turn that he played it. But uh, unfortunately for him, Hakes did have the answer at the ready with the spell star sprite. Both players look like they're going to turtle up. We'll see if either can squeeze out the dub. We're going to turn number two of turns. Jonathan Hakes has turn two and turn four to potentially win. See if he can find it. Okay, so now we can fire up the hall and still have a mana left over for something like a lightning bolt. What happens if we attack with everybody? If we just fire up the hall and attack with everyone... Uh, Murktide goes, Rhino, block. Rhino chumps, Murktide blocks, snap. You take two. Yeah, that's the play. Puts you to ten, and then... How do you only take two? Rhino chumps the hall. Yeah. Oh, you take four. Yeah, sorry. So you block the Unsettled Mariner. You take four. All right, well, we're going to start off here, it looks like, with an expressive iteration. This could give us some more answers, give us more info. Finds another expressive iteration, a bolt and a snap caster mage. We might be able to win without attacking, huh? Maybe. Maybe he goes bolt, snap, bolt on the rhino. Then gets in with the little guys. Maybe doesn't get in at all. Maybe just plays maximum defense. I kind of like bolt, snap, bolt, face. Or I guess you can just bolt face past turn. Upstairs. <laughs> down to nine. Yeah, it looks like Hakes is trying to set up a big attack on turn four to close out this game. Okay, I'm getting down to the wire. See if Hakes has anything else, but his deck operates mostly at infant speed, so I'm going to pass back. Drogowski ticks down the crashing footfalls. It is no longer a factor other than... No, it's no longer a factor. Even yeah, on turn it, five, it's going to come in and just make two four fours that can't attack. So, yeah, perfectly timed crashing footfalls. <laughs> <laughs> they usually are when they're suspended. You get to cast it, but it won't do anything. But that's every time you suspend them. <laughs> All right, we're going to look at Unsettled Mariner to make sure we know what it does. I believe this protects all of your permits. Let's get Unsettled Mariner on the table. It's a two-cost, two-two creature, changeling. Uh, it's a shapeshifter. It says whenever you or a permanent you control becomes the target of a spell or ability, an opponent controls, counter that spell or ability unless this controller pays one. So Ice has two targets. Fury has multiple targets. You have to pay one for each of those targets. And it looks like actually Dragowski drew Fury... But, uh, oh, wow. Another Murktide, which will grow the first Murktide. So is this going to be... No, even if we exile five, it's only a 12-12. So it's not lethal by itself. But this creates some offense-defense possibilities for Dragowski. All right, so pl five plus and plus one counters are going to go on both Murktide regions. One for the Delve and one for... Ooh, he's changing his mind. Okay. Four counters, leaving a crashing footfalls in the graveyard for God knows why for next game, maybe. We can miss the trigger on the other Murktide, and it looks like we might be doing just that. Okay, well, we're going to turtle up into turn Essence Flux. This is going to return the Snapcaster Mage to play, and we're going to blink and cast Wizard's Lightning. That's going to go face. David Dragowski down to nine. We know that Jonathan Hicks has another Snapcaster Mage in hand, so one more three damage spell on top of that Snapcaster Mage can get the job done in turns. There's also, go if we add another Snapcaster Mage to the board and just fire up the hall, there's only three blockers for Dragowski. We're blocking the hall and two of the two power creatures. That's four damage coming across. So that could be lethal by itself. Dragowski needs a removal spell, or this is a lethal attack for Jonathan Hakes. Well, he does fetch an, a tapped steam vents. Doesn't see the line of attacking, unfortunately. And now we're going to go back his way. Finds another unsettled mariner. See if he has anything that can draw cards. I don't know what this card is. What do you think it is, Ross? Guess. Um... 
looks like a, oh, is that the that's the one lightning helix. That was lightning helix. We're gonna take it down on turn four of turn. Snapcaster Mage, the classic, is it bolt you out and John Snap takes, bolt. wins on turn four of turns, moving to two and zero. Oh. Congratulations on that victory. That was impressive stuff from the Jeskai Fairies deck. And Ross's dream of having Jeskai Fairies win Sunday's Invitational still live. Yeah, 2 0. Needs at least two more match wins to uh, to get there. If he wins the next two, he will be locked. He can draw the last round at 4 0 1. But uh, looking pretty good even at 4 1 when you start 2 0. It's going to help your tiebreakers.